Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Uh, my speech, inshallah, will be um, on heaven, inshallah. So I'm going to start, start off with a couple of verses. Um, 32.17, heaven indescribably beautiful. You have no idea how much... Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, you have no idea how much joy and happiness are waiting for you as a reward for your righteous works. Th uh, 32.19, as for those who believe and lead a righteous life... They have deserved the eternal paradise, such as their abode, in return for their righteous work. Um, so, what these verses are basically saying is that as long as we follow and do and do what God says, uh, you know, f you know, follow the right path, um, do our contact prayers, don't idol worship, give to the needy and poor, fast for the nights of Ramadan, you know, etc. Um, God will see that we are following Him and we are doing as He says in Inshallah, and He will. It's a promise from him that he will admit us into heaven. Uh, 1026. Heaven, heaven and hell are eternal. For the righteous, the reward will be multiplied and manifold. Um, their faces will never experience any deprivation or shame. These are the dwellers of paradise. They abide therein forever. In this verse, God tells, tells us that once we go to heaven, inshallah, we will, we will be there for eternity on that that all of our sins we committed in the world will be erased from our record. And there will be nothing for us to be ashamed of, and God will not be deprived any provisions. 1335, heaven allegorically described. The, the allegory of heaven, which is promised for the righteous, is flowing streams, inexhaustible provisions, and cool shade. Such is the destiny for those who observe righteousness, while the destiny for the disbelievers is hell. Once we have done what we needed to do, follow what God says, God will bring us back to him in heaven. Uh, as the verse says, such is their destiny for those who observe righteousness, while the destiny for the, believers, the disbelievers is hell. 22-23, the bliss of heaven. God will admit those who believe and lead a righteous life uh, wait, sorry. God will admit those who believe and lead a righteous life into gardens with flowing streams. They will be adorned therein with bracelets of gold, pearls, and their garment, garments will, therein will be silk. God says that in this heaven, uh, this will be heaven, um, heaven, wait, sorry, I'm getting my words messed up. This is heaven for the believers. We will be Gifted with all the things we have ever wanted in this life, and but we didn't get it. We will all of that will be waiting for us in heaven. It is be better than anything you have imagined. Way better than anything you have ever imagined. I'm gonna be talking. Oh wait, uh, one more, one more. Uh, Ten sixty-two. Happiness now and forever. Absolutely, God, God's allies nothing to f have nothing to fear, nor will they grieve. The footnote says most people think that they have. They have to wait until the day of resurrection before they receive the rewards for righteousness or the retribution for the wickedness. But the Quran repeatedly assures the believers that they are guaranteed perfect happiness now, uh, here in this world, now and forever. Uh, so once we follow what God says in the Quran, God promises us perfect happiness now and forever. Most people think that they have to wait for, uh, until the day of resurrection to earn their rewards for the righteous works. But God says that we will, that we will earn those rewards in this life. Now I'm going to be talking about the different types of uh, hev heaven and then, yeah. Okay, high heaven, Appendix 11. Upon the arrival of Almighty God, all the humans and jinns will be automatically stratified according to their degree of growth and development. Those who nourish their souls through, through worshiping God alone, believing in the hereafter, and leading a righteous life, would be strong enough to stay close to God. They will occupy the highest ranks. So... This so for the believers we will be um, we will be going to uh, high heaven inshallah. Um, it is the best. It's better than yeah everything. Like I said, it's literally infinite infinite times better than anything we have ever imagined. Like any place in the world, Hawaii it doesn't really matter. It's just a, it's just a million infinite times better. Uh, this will be granted us to the people who have worked hard enough for this. Lower heaven. 
Appendix 11. Those who develop their souls to a lesser degree, as well as those who die before the age of 40, will move downward to the lower heaven. They will go to the location where they can be close, and close to God as their degree of growth and development permits them to be. So, yeah, people who, as it says, people who die under the age of 40 and who have, they, didn't have, they haven't worked hard enough to be into high heaven, but they've worked enough to the point where they do deserve lower heaven. So people who die under 40 and people do, uh, who do work but not hard enough will go to lower heaven, inshallah. Uh, okay, purgatory. There will be, I, oh, okay. There will be people who nourish, people who nourish their souls just enough to spare them hell, but not enough to enter the lower heaven. They are neither in hell nor in heaven. They will implore God to admit them into the lower heaven. God will have uh, mercy on them and will merge the purgatory into the lower, into the lower heaven. Uh, people who have just worked hard enough not to get they have just passed hell and are just now in purgatory. Purgatory. It is basically, it's be, it's a lot better than this life, but it's not as good as lower and higher heaven. It's, yeah, okay. So the main idea of my speech was I was basically just trying to like explain heaven to, uh, to everybody, you know, lower heaven, purgatory, um, what we need to do, what, uh, um, inshallah, it, yeah. Um, so basically what I'm trying to say is that when God, uh, what God says, our souls end up growing, uh, and once we have proven to be worshipers of God alone, uh, he will admit us into his kingdom here on earth, and when we die, we go straight to heaven, an indescribably beautiful place, that will spend eternity at once we get there. God says that heaven is indescribable, which means that you cannot describe how amazing it is in, in the word indescribable. Um, uh, so it's basically describing watermelon to someone who hasn't tasted it. It's like the only way you can make them understand is to use examples of things that, that they have tasted, but it's you can't really like, put the feeling, taste in them out, you know, but yeah, um, he describes to us, God describes to us, um, how heaven, uh, is, you know, flowing streams, rivers of honey, milk, and wine, etc. Everything that we have ever wanted will be awaiting us in the bliss of heaven, only for the believers, but for the people who died under the age of 40, and people who had, who had done enough in their life to, will end up going to either lower heaven or purgatory. Praise be to God, Lord of the universe. Lord, Lord of the universe. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Shane. Any questions? Yeah. 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 very good speech, Shane. Oh. I, I wanted to ask you: um, Do you do you think that the, this thought of heaven being so incredibly beautiful? Does that influence your daily decision making to, you know, kind of looking forward to get there, to go to paradise? Do you I mean, believe that does influence you? Yeah, Marshall, so let's say like I'm thinking of doing something, but I realize that it might be a sin or just something. I'm, and I'm thinking this, I have to, uh, I don't, I shouldn't do this if I want to make it into heaven. I need to mm -hmm. do, I need to do as good as I can possible in this life just to get to the higher heaven because I know that it doesn't really seem like much now, but when we get there, inshallah, God, it would, it's amazing. So, um, yeah, I don't know if that really answers the yeah, question. Yeah, mashallah, but. praise God, mashallah, you're great. <laughs> Any more questions for sure? Oh, one more, oh, way back there. Who? Oh. <laughs> Alaikum. And I, I'm impressed because you're such a young man and for you to um, have the, the ability to speak about paradise at 14 to 16 is saying a lot because at 14 to 16, reading Quran, making Salat was nowhere on my mind. I wanted to climb trees 
and, and didn't even have a concept of what paradise was. So I just wanted to commend you, you know, and um, I will continue to uh, give this to my grandchildren because I gave it to my children. And maybe when they're your age, they'll be talking paradise too because tomorrow's not promised to us. Inshallah. Thank you. Thank you. One last comment, Mary. Hey, Shane. Hey, <laughs> okay. So what? I, so I, uh, this speech is being recorded, and everybody can hear it too. So I know the kids aren't here, but what advice would you give to yourself and other kids your own age and younger than you um, to start doing right now? Um, most importantly, in their submission to attain what the speech you just gave about to attain this. Um, What's your advice to this? I would to them? say just if you're going, if you think you're something, doing something bad, you, you just need to inshallah over, overthink it and make sure that it's not a sin because it could affect what uh, what happens later in your life. So I'm just saying. <laughs> Um, yeah, just try to look out for yourself. Try to think about anything, everything that you're doing um, so you don't commit that sin, inshallah. So, yeah. Inshallah. I, I know you and you're a really good kid, mashallah. Praise God. Good example. Okay, and then Thank the you. last question. My last question. I, no, it's not, it's yeah, not my sorry. last question. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, mashallah, you, you, you're a good influence in, in our community I, uh, to other kids, mashallah. So, how uh, do you um, avoid being influenced by the outside elements like, like you know, school, high school, all that stuff with, with other kids who okay. are not even thinking about God, let alone worshiping God? Yeah. So, what, like, sometimes my parents have told me to try to keep those people out of your life. People who, you know, let's say, cuss around you or just do bad things in general, just try to not be around those people uh, so that you don't get influenced by them to do the wrong thing. Thank you, Shane. Thank you.